Tarzan and Darno, in passing through an unfamiliar section of jungle, come upon the remnant of the Burton Ashley expedition. The four, Major Burton Ashley, Jeanette Burton, Dr. Wong Tai, and Terence O'Rourke, are lost. Tarzan offers to lead them to safety. In defense of the party, the ape man kills an enormous, yellow skinned, half human creature, and then conceals Jeanette and the others high in the branches of a tree. Leaving them in the care of Darno, he goes to reconnoiter. Returning, he leads the group out of immediate danger to the bank of a distant river. Proceeding cautiously downstream, they hear the sound of strange guttural voices coming from behind a thick tangle of underbrush. Noiselessly, Tarzan parts the bushes and peers through the opening into a clearing beside the rushing stream. Jeanette, close behind him, stares terrified over the ape man's shoulder. <laughs> Good heavens! Tarzan! There! Be quiet. Darno. Oh, hey, Tarzan, what is it? Look there. May Tonner depressed. Yellow men. May the all seeing protect us. There are at least 30 of them. By Jove. We're in for it, Tarzan. Begari, we stepped out of the frying pan straight into the fire. You're right, Major. We're in a bad spot. Could this be the group we heard last night? Those drums? No, we left them behind. This must be another party. Look there, on the river bank. Isn't that a dugout? Faith, if we could get to that boat. That's what we're going to try for. It is a long way from here. They will see us before we have half covered the distance. We'll take the chance. Sakai Blue, we must. It is the only one we have. Right, Lieutenant. With the boat under us, we can paddle out to the middle, make faces at the yellow heathen, and maybe reach the Congo. Providing this stream empties into the Congo, what do you think, Tarzan? O'Rourke may be right. We'll work down to the edge of the river, to that baobab tree with the screen of bushes. Come on. We have the advantage with our rifles. They're armed only with spears and clubs. Even so, we couldn't kill more than a few of them before the others got to us. Here. Now, when we leave these bushes, we'll be in the open. They'll see us. If we can take them by surprise, maybe we can make it. Faith, twill be a sweet race. And the devil take the hindmost. Make straight for the boat. Don't stop until you're in it. Darno, you go first. I'll bring up the rear. Ready? Ready. Then go. With his rifle ready, Darno bounds from behind the concealing screen of underbrush. Straight toward the dugout, he sprints along the open river bank. Close behind him, the others follow in a desperate attempt to reach the canoe. Before they have covered a third of the distance, a piercing, weird cry of warning resounds through the jungle. Faster, Darno. They've seen us. We will never make it. Keep going, Jeanette. Ashley, Wong, faster. At the cry, the yellow giants squatting around a fire in the center of the clearing spring to their feet. For an instant, they stare in silent surprise at the fleeing whites. Then, yelling savagely, they leap into action. With uncanny speed, they bound forward toward the dugout in an effort to intercept the fugitives. Gauging the distance between himself and the boat, Darno realizes that he and his companions can never reach it before they are caught by the yellow demons. We cannot make it, Tarzan. They run like antelope. We'll have to give them a fight. Them devils are closer to the boat now than we are. Stop. Gather on to Do the best you can. Here they come, the heathen devils. Let them have it. No, <laughs> Shrieking, bellowing, many now spouting blood from gunshot wounds, the yellow men rush close and surround the little group of whites as they stand fighting desperately for their lives. Riga! Riga! The challenging cry of the great ape rings out piercingly above the sound of battle. One great yellow savage, his shoulder wet and red with blood, charges Tarzan, hurls his heavy spear. The ape man leaps aside, then in close. His knife flashes once, twice. With a weird death scream, the yellow hulk lurches forward, falls on Tarzan, bearing him to the ground by sheer weight. Before the ape-man can toss the dead savage aside, he is smothered by a swarm of yellow bodies. Gradually, the shrill yells, the shots, the sounds of battle die out. Tarzan is jerked roughly to his feet. He looks around to see his companions, minus their weapons, captives of the yellow savages. <laughs> Hello, Tarzan. Pas de chance. The luck is against us. Uh, never mind. Hey, then we thinned out the devils anyway. 
Yeah, there's five of them dead and half a dozen wounded. Are any of you hurt? I have two or three scratches from spears, no more. How are ye, Jeanette? Kushla. Oh, I guess I'm all right. What will they do to us, Uncle Jim? I wish I knew, my dear. But keep a stiff upper lip. We can only guess at that, mademoiselle. It looks very much, Lieutenant, as if our doom were already sealed. The fire. The golly. You mean, throw us in? They're leading us straight to it, my friend. Mon Dieu, Tarzan. Do you suppose they are cannibal? It may be. Look, they are tying Ashley and Le Doctor Wong together, back to back. And O'Rourke and Jeanette. Our turn now. Double up your hands when they bind your wrists. They decide our fate, O'Rourke. At least we've escaped being roasted. For the time being, Ashley. I believe Lieutenant Darno gets rightly. These creatures are cannibals. Wait, they are throwing their dead into the river. They wouldn't do that if they were cannibals. They are feeding those dead bodies to the crocodile. Good heaven, the water's alive with them. By Jove, it sounds as if they were calling them. Voila, they are stacking our weapons down there near the boat. Thank heaven they're not throwing them in the river. They might just as well for all the good they are to us now. Oh, if we could just get out of these bonds. We would only be caught and tied up again, my child. There are too many. We could not escape. Your bow and arrows and rope Tarzan. Parla, there, close to Jeanette and Aurora. Yes, I know. The talking drum. That savage pounding on a hollow log with a club. Talking drum is right. Listen. Communicating with the party we escaped from last night, I'll wager. Doubt that means we shall have visitors shortly. I could they? Tarzan. Yes. If you were free, could you reach your bow and arrows and get away into the trees? Yes, but I can't leave you in the others. But Tarzan, you could help us. These strips of hide we're tied with are strong. It'll take me a long time to work loose. Uh, move your arms a little. Uh, your hands. Can you? Uh, not much. Tied so close together, I'll hurt your arms if I move mine. Never mind that. I can feel the knot under my fingers. A very clumsy one. I think I can work it loose. Now, move your arms again. So. Bon, bon. Now, sit still. While Darno works feverishly at the knot binding his arms with those of Tarzan, several yellow men pile wood on the fire until it becomes a roaring blaze. Two huge brutes squat on the ground beside a hollowed out log. With sticks, they commence to beat slowly, rhythmically on the improvised drum. The remaining yellow men, grasping spears and clubs and chanting monotonously, circle the fire in an awkward shuffling dance. As each savage passes the little group of captives, he shakes his spear and glares at them from cruel, bloodshot eyes. Ethel Kushler, them devils don't mean us any good. Terry, I, I'm scared. Gary, so am I. Arok, Wong, Jeanette. Where's, where's Tarzan? And Dano? Gary, both of them gone. They must have managed it while we were watching the savages. But, but why didn't they free us too? And that means they've left us to our fate. Leave be, Major. Tarzan ain't the fellow to desert, neither is the lieutenant. You didn't let me finish, Terry. Either they've left us to our fate, or they'll try to rescue us. That's more like it. Them two act like they've been through this sort of thing before. Oh, but good heavens, what can they hope to do alone against so many? Keep your eyes open, Akushla. They'll be giving us a chance to escape. When they do, be ready to take it. If they'd only taken Jeanette with them, Wong. I don't like to think what might happen to her when they've finished with us. 
Brace yourselves. Here they come. That yellow gang knows Tarzan and Darno are gone. Yelling and gesticulating savagely, the yellow-skinned mob crowds around the four captives. One huge brute, apparently the leader, jerks O'Rourke and Jeanette to their feet. Shaking them fiercely and pointing to the ground where Tarzan and Darno lay, he growls words at them. O'Rourke glares back at the yellow giant defiantly. Ripping a long bronze knife from the sheath of his belt, the savage presents the razor-sharp point at the Irishman's throat. Say something, man, before he cuts your throat. If you can't talk, make sign. How the devil can I with my hands tied? Well, do something if you want to live. I don't know what the devil you're talking about, you yellow heathen. But if it's the lieutenant and Tarzan you're asking for, they've gone. Gone? Gone? Yes, gone, if you know what I mean. With a savage guttural growl, the yellow giant hurls O'Rourke and Jeanette to the ground, bends down and cuts the thongs binding them together. Once more, he jerks the Irishman to his feet and thrusts him into the crowd of yellow men. Jeanette, Wong, and Ashley watch fearfully as the savages drag O'Rourke across the clearing to the river's edge. I should not advise you to watch this, Jeanette, my child. But what are they going to do? What fiends! They're calling the crocodiles! Exactly. And you see, they are coming by the score. Oh! Oh, how awful! They're going to throw Terry in the water. 